I'm really looking forward to the piece finally making it to the stage. And there's a, a mixture of sadness and happiness that we're actually there, but that this project, which has been such a huge part of my life for so long, is finally sort of coming to an end. I first had the idea of The Tempest back in 1982, 1983, because in the first full-length ballet that I'd done, I'd used a whole range of uh, music by uh, Sibelius. And one of the pieces was the overture to his incidental music to The Tempest. After that full-length ballet, I wondered if there was a, a, a ballet based on The Tempest to this Sibelius music. So I read the play, immediately saw what I thought was the potential for a dance work. So we've been rehearsing for, I would say, almost a month, three, four weeks. Um, right now we're piecing bits together. We've rehearsed each scene individually and with the different groups, but right now we're starting to just piece it all together and do the links between scenes. Um, so it can be quite chaotic and quite slow but um, it's quite exciting at the same time to see it all come together. Not, say, discovering what the story is. We know what the story is, we know what the play is. It's Shakespeare, it's very old, it's, it's all there, but it's discovering the choreographer's, David Bintley's interpretation of what he wants in the ballet itself. Right from the start, I was involved with the lighting designer, Bruno Poet, working very closely with him to find out what his desires were, what he needed to light the show, and then whether we could afford it, tour it, run it, maintain it, and, and get the show on and up and running in that time. And that's where we are this week. We plan it as much as we like, knowing that things will change. As David works with the dancer in the studio, things change. For us, it very much doesn't finish on opening night. It's a constant, challenge each week to make the show look the same as the original creative team made it look here on opening night. That is, that is the, almost the most difficult part of our job. It's a, a beautiful sort of neutral space with the curves and textures which take light beautifully. It was in a really conversation about what the different scenes should be, what they should look like. How do you make a storm? How do you make a beach? How do you make an, a magical enchanted island? I'm lucky enough to be creating um, two of the roles, uh, the, the bosun, so Neptune, um, which is a role that David isn't in the original play that David's brought into to our ballet. And I also play the role of Caliban. It's been incredible to, um, to have a role created on you. I guess it's every dancer's dream to, to have that happen for them. Um, so I'm really enjoying the process. Everyone has their own individual way of preparing for the show. The minute I put any costume on, I, I feel that character straight away. Well, I think the first meeting we had was December to talk about these and to start working on ideas for these and looking at different fabrics and different things we could try out and different ways of getting what lay the designer wanted. So it's been a lot of trial and trial and error this one. Well, I think the making for ballet is probably technically the most difficult area of costume making because there's so much movement required by the dancer. You can learn an awful lot from watching rehearsals and watching the actual wear and tear that they go through. And then if you have a look at them when they've taken them off, you can learn so much.
you can make something that looks beautiful standing still, but if it doesn't move well on the performer, you've kind of lost something because you want to enhance their movement. We have a piano obviously every time and we work with that for so long um, but when it comes to that first orchestra rehearsal everything comes to life it really goes oh okay I'm meant to be doing it on that moment or that beat or that's violin you know um, and it does it makes it just makes sense it starts to make sense and you like you can get a sense of how you need to portray your character or the sense of the mood of the piece. This score there's a particular aspect where the dynamics are quite different within different sections of the orchestra. So the balancing is a very important factor and it's very difficult for us to know at this point how every part relates to the other part. So I think that's a particular difficulty with this work and it's a fascinating aspect of, of the piece. So this is my first ballet school, but I've always wanted to write a ballet um, for as long as I can remember. So it was wonderful when David Bintley approached me and, and then said it was The Tempest, which was just such a gift for a composer, you know, because it's such a, a, a visual piece, but also it has so many sounds in it. It's all just like chains. Then at a certain point we come together, we all are... It's like, it's like magic happening, that's absolutely sure. But this magic is just because we are all professional in what we do, and then we know if we do this, this is gonna happen. So it's like building up trust, and then when we come together, it's the final point, in fact. That's the, that's the, the, the magic, and then hopefully, all what has been imagined will be there how, it's, how it was, was perceived. I was thinking so much um, in terms of characterizing each of the characters with a particular orchestral colour. And like Prospero is cellos and horns, uh, Caliban is a mixture of bassoon and horn, which sounds like a saxophone. I wanted this sort of hybrid instrument. The main thing is you remind yourself that two and a half years ago that's when you started. So it is a emotionally cathartic moment when you can actually sit down and enjoy other people's work. Everything affects this beautiful pristine vision that you thought you had in your head, which has been in your head for, in the case of The Tempest, for uh, over 30 years. You have this image, you are constantly striving towards that image, you're trying to make it as, as wonderful and as fresh and, and as, uh, as exciting as it's always been in your head, but obviously it never is like it is in your head, it becomes something different. When it's a new production, um, you never know how it's going to be taken, you've only kind of had your colleagues and obviously the choreographer and ballet masters and mistresses and things like that to kind of guide you and you, you kind of put your trust in them on how it's kind of going to turn out. You've got to go on for that first scene being fully in character, there's no warming up and the audience have to know straight away who you are. Tonight is the first night but of course it's not the end of the journey, it's actually just the beginning because these dancers and performers have really got to get a hold of these roles and just improve them and make them stronger and stronger over this whole performing period.